really bright out here. Hey everyone, today uh, I was about to take apart the inside of my van and do a van rebuild. And before I do that, I thought it would be cool to show you guys kind of the setup that I have in there now and uh, go over what worked, what didn't work, and why I am going to be redoing the inside. So let's take a look. Okay, so first, I guess starting with the back doors, these are my tables. Um, they're just, they just hook up with the rope here. And uh, it's kind of a weird design, but it's been working. And I like the panel look of the doors. And it's the only way I can get the tables on the back doors um, because I don't have a lot of depth because this, this you know, box comes so close to the back of the van. So I had to come up with a different idea for the, the tables, but it worked and I don't know why I'm rambling on about my table so much. This side, the table is a little different uh, than the other one. It's got a different shape to it. Same rope technique for uh, popping them up, but it needed to be a little bit bigger for my grill to fit on. So that's why this one's got uh, these weird little notches because the uh, release to open the back door is right here. So I had to notch that out. And the cool thing about the Ford Transit Connect is if you push this button down here, it releases the door and it can swing all the way open. And now you have a lot more space to work around and it's not so uh, claustrophobic feeling. Up here are my curtains. They're just held up with Velcro and then they just roll down. So that way they can be blacked out and you can't see in the inside of those when the doors are shut. Okay, so it's insanely bright and I can't uh, find a happy medium here, so bear with me. Uh, I guess first and foremost, I use this thing to clean dishes and uh, you know if I need to rinse my hair or anything like that, I uh, just fill it up. I set it up on one of these tables here and then it just lets me have a running water source for a little while at least. Uh, this is just the dish towel. And then behind there is a cutting board. Tucked up in this corner is my wax. So I do a lot of skateboarding. Tried to keep it in a dark place so it didn't melt, but it always melts. And then back here is my power strip, which is just ran uh, an extension cord. I have a 2000 watt inverter behind the driver's seat that I'll show you here in a minute. But um, I just ran that so that way when I need power, I just flip the switch behind the driver's seat and then I now have power in the back, which is a lot easier to get to. And you'll see why it's easier to get to once you find out where I put the inverter. Before I get too far into this, this van build is a very odd van build because when I built the cabinets in here originally, I didn't plan to live in it. I planned to just use it for working. I do uh, video work and some construction stuff. so. I built shelves and, and things like that just to hold tools. Then I decided to live in the van, so I started adding to it. And so that's why it's kind of a very unique, we'll say, uh, layout. And uh, that's part of the reason why I'm rebuilding it because I found that it's not really working for me. But let's continue. Okay, so back here are just a couple spare bungee cords. Um, as I've been on the road, things have just kind of found their place. But uh, here's some just quick access tools, you know, lighters for my propane stove, razor blades. That's not a razor blade. That is a razor blade holder, a knife. Ha! Just pencils, screwdrivers, scissors, the handy dandy grip tape file, tape measure. So then, this is part of the original van build. When I got the van, I originally built this cabinet here with no doors on it. Of course, there's no bed or anything like that, but this cabinet was here. If you can see, there is a speaker here. Um, that was there, but uh, I decided to make this kind of my pantry. And so these just tip down. Normally I have more food, but uh, I'm about to pull everything out of here. So then, uh, you know, there's more there's so many little cabinets and everything. Just anywhere I can fit space. This little guy holds my potatoes. Potato drawer. But yeah, so when this is down, this kind of doubles as my desk. 
I just sit in here cross-legged, which I can't do very well, by the way. Part of the reason I'm rebuilding the van. So my laptop will go here, and I have a, another shelf for just more room if I need to put a hard drive up there or, or whatever. But this thing kind of doubles as my desk slash food storage. Um, but then they just clip back into place. Okay, so let's go to the bed, I guess. The bed is just bridged. Um, if you can see in here, the bed is just bridged between, there's like, I kind of put like a cleat in on each side. Um, it's like three quarter ply, so it's, there's flex, but it's definitely not going anywhere. And then across that front edge, there's a, another support. Um, and then down here is just storage. Um, I had a big tripod down there and a little Makita circular saw that fit way back up in that corner. And then here is where my clothes went, my suitcase. Over here was kind of the closet. Um, just a bunch of random stuff went in there. So in here, which I recommend from just about anyone that's gonna be doing this van thing, is a lockbox. Now I wouldn't be showing you this if I wasn't about to move everything in my van, but, but in the lockbox is everything I need to get home at least if let's say I was out and about and you know somebody mugged me and they took my wallet they would have my ID my debit card if I had cash in my wallet you know they, they would get away with everything that I have to get home and yeah you get your debit card stolen but if you go to the bank you know I use a nationwide bank and uh, you need your ID to access your account at least I do and so what I put in the lockbox is my passport, in case I want to go, you know, to another country, drive into Canada or something, and then enough cash to get home, whether it's to drive home or fly home if the van needs to stay put for whatever reason. But it's just a, it's a good backup plan if you happen to lose your wallet. You know, you'd, you'd be kind of really, really bummed if you were not able to access any of your money if you got your ID stolen or something like that. And I think that. If you walk into the bank with your passport, it's at least enough uh, identification to let you get into your account or whatever, and maybe memorize your, uh, you know, account numbers and whatnot, so you can access all that stuff if you need to. But just a handy tip that I learned. Okay, so on to the next part. Close that. That magnet is the strongest magnet I've ever used. I don't know how. It's only one up in that top right corner and it's never fallen down once. The thing is on there, I love it. One more thing is I tried to do this van thing a few months ago, uh, actually it was you know almost six months ago now, and uh, I was only gone for a couple weeks and somebody rear-ended me. So they smashed up my doors, they smashed up the inside of my van right here. I don't know if you can see this, but this is all bent, uh, this bolt, you know, you can see uh, the, the paneling just folded. Um, and so, and what that did was basically take my house that I worked so hard to make everything square and straight and now it's all slanted like this. So, when I show you these cabinets and cupboards and everything, if anything doesn't look square, I tried my best, but after she hit me, uh, I had to deal with all these odd shapes and walls and whatever so I did my best but not my most proud craftsmanship but I had to make do. Okay so moving up. Up top here was pillow storage. There used to be two of them in there but whatever. Uh, sleeping bag you can see I just held it in with a bungee cord and then this is the kitchen kind of area thing. In here is coffee pot, uh, some spices, my propane stove which again that pulls out, it's gonna be super bright, but and set on that table. Um, the most satisfying propane storage I've ever uh, experienced. I lucked out when I built this. I measured it and it, it fits so snug that two of them just slide right in there and they're, they fit perfectly. Um, dishes, pots and pans, you know, plates are up there. But yeah, that all just stays in there. And again, these are just uh, magnets, so click quick they have opened up but they rarely do um, and I never decided to throw a latch across here or anything but it worked for now and then up here there were three of those plastic like shoebox 
storage. I took the lids off. And they basically acted as drawers. So, you know, I had like first aid in one, uh, you know, plastic bags, like sandwich bags and stuff like that. Just whatever, more storage I could uh, suck out of this thing. Okay, so that's the back of the van. Uh, let's go around to the front and I'll open up the side door so you can see a little more of what I'm working with. Also, I got this custom van tattoo. Two of them actually, I got one up here. It says things will work out, I thought it was kind of funny. Um, and then this one, they were both done by this really talented pinstriper. I went to this old 68 Chevy van convention and the guy was there. Uh, his name's Michael Swan. I'll put his uh, Instagram link in the description, but definitely check out his stuff. He's a very, very talented pinstriper and uh, awesome, awesome guy. And he actually is doing his own rebuild of a 68. Uh, don't quote me on that. It's an old Chevy. I don't, I don't remember the year though. Okay, let's do the side doors. So my uh, original line of work was uh, videography. So when I built the van, I had built a bunch of shelves on this side so that I could get out of the driver's door, open the side door, grab the Pelican, and be on my way. So, nothing's in here right now because I took everything out, but this was all the, you know, the cubbies and everything for all the, I had two Pelicans, one for the camera, my lights, sandbags were down there, uh, grip bag, there was a little five-in-one that fit up here with some umbrellas and whatever else I could squeeze in there, but uh, I'll spin this around and let you guys get a better look. Yeah, it's definitely uh, very custom for what I needed. I don't know that this would benefit anyone too much, but um, up here are hinges because the doors on the back side open up so you, can, so you can access the camera equipment from the inside of the van if it's, you know, raining or something. But, uh, you know, this works really well for what I used it for. And uh... So here, yeah, you can see the unsquareness of the van probably pretty good looks like it's slanted all to the right but again I'm gonna blame that on the other person so I'll go around to the other side here now and uh, show you kind of how this bed's gonna work so here you can see I guess first before we do the bed uh, I had a little light here at night super bright speaker um, up top there and then a couple hooks just for hanging whatever. Uh, I usually kept books up there. Um, these doors get to the camera equipment and they just swing open. So then it's passed all the way through. Um, so, close that up. Down there, I don't know if you can see that. Down in here is the uh, inverter. That flips on really easy, um, but it is running off of my starter battery. So I try not to use it too much, um, and if I do, I, I have the van running. Uh, it works fine, and it's it's made me, you know, it's gotten me this far, but I know it would be better to have a secondary battery for electronics, you know, charging phones, laptops, um, lighting, uh, and, and I'm also gonna try to cut in a, a roof fan up here I don't it might be too bright for you to see it's kind of a weird cloudy sunny day but um, yeah so let me let me show you how this bed works okay we'll try this here so what I did was because I needed to be able to open these doors um, I, I couldn't have my bed be permanently uh, set up so I did a panel style where right here's a, a little edge um, it's like a strip so it rests on that. I, I tacked in more of those, uh, kind of like a cleat, I guess you could call it. Up here I got lazy and I never painted it, but the front of this edge slides up. It, it hits right in this groove so that it can't slide over and then fall off of this. So it kind of locks itself in here and then the seat kind of keeps this from flexing too much, but it sounds... A little finicky, but it, it actually works pretty good. So let me slide it up and I'll show you. So all I do is I usually get one corner up, or this front edge locked in, and then push forward. Ta-da! You can slide it all the way against the those little supports on that those doors, but this works really, really well. And then I just have one of those... Um, 
It's like a self-inflating mattress. It just, you loosen these two like nozzles, unroll it, and then it uh, self-inflates. It's super comfy. Um, it's on Amazon. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. I don't make any money off that, but I just think it's a super awesome mattress. But um, yeah, and then I have this uh, curtain here. Uh, you know, I just have a bungee cord across the top, pull the curtain, gives me privacy. Again, those back uh, doors have those roll down curtains and those have been working. You know, everything's, it's, it keeps it really, you know, blacked out in here. So if I'm sleeping somewhere, it's, you know, nobody's gonna be able to see inside. The van comes with this little shelf up here. I usually just keep like snacks while I'm driving. I have like a little headlamp light over there. This attempted 35 millimeter camera hobby. Uh, <laughs> not the best photographer in the world. So that is the uh, setup that I've been using. It works. I've been on the road for a little while now, um, but I guess I'll kind of just quickly tell you what I plan to change. Um, I'm gonna be gutting the van completely. I'm gonna be pulling out everything that I built. I, you know, I put this subfloor in. I'm gonna take that out, take the factory floor out. I'm gonna insulate everything. Um, hopefully, put a wood floor in. Um, cut that that uh, ceiling fan in here for ventilation because it gets hot in here. And then um, I'm gonna try to do one of those slider beds that'll be a couch during the day, pull it out and it'll fold down to a bed. And then I'm gonna do a, a larger version of this cabinet so it comes out deeper so that I can actually cook inside the van. Um, what I've noticed is that I do spend a lot more time in the van than I planned, uh, just with weather and heat and you know things like that. Um, but I want to make it so that I can get through from the back door, if I want to walk in, I can go in and out on the, you know, the side door, so that it, there's, it's not like me crawling around on this bed if I want to move around in here. It just, it was feeling too claustrophobic, and I wasn't a fan of it. And also, everything is black. When I built the van for the like, tools and whatever, uh, I wrapped all the, you know, all the wood. In, in this black automotive carpet so that it would be quiet and then uh, I just kept doing that to kind of keep everything to match and it's so dark in here and this carpet is it's nice but it's not my favorite thing in the world also before anyone thinks that I just don't drink water let me uh, let me move this panel again try to do this one-handed this will make it look like a very good build if I can do this can't do this Oh my, yeah, I got it, okay. So that's what I do when I wanna put the bed away, but down here, I had five gallons of water. There's a little eye bolt down there, and then a bungee cord ran over to here, and it kept five gallons of, of water behind these seats, and that's what I used. Um, and then that one on the back, I would just fill up if I needed to have like running water for whatever reason, but yeah, that was, I definitely think five gallons was enough for one person, for me. Especially, you know, I, I do a lot of skateboarding, so I'm always drinking water, but um, yeah, it worked. And then uh, I have a cooler uh, actually in, not in here right now. It's one of those, it's almost a Yeti. It's like a different brand cooler, but thing keeps ice for like days. Um, back to future plans. Um, it's pretty much it. I'm gonna try to keep it simple. I definitely brought way too much stuff uh, when I did this the first time. Um, there's a lot of weight in here and I realized I didn't use, you know, even half of the stuff that I that I brought with me. Uh, so I'm going to try to go out with a lot less and, uh, you know, kind of go with that uh, less is more mentality. Um, one last thing I guess is the rack. That's kind of cool. Uh, let me close these back doors. Okay, quick, because my camera is probably going to overheat again. Boom. Yeah, so I put the ladder on the back. I had to mod it up top. I had to weld some different brackets so that I could get it to fit. It works great. Um, up top, I have this custom rack that we got built. I can't weld, but just did the fabrication. Had my, uh, my dad's friend weld it up. And then I put all the, the wood on it to kind of give it a 
different look. Let's just go up there. Gas can for the generator and or my van. The Thule carries way too much freaking stuff, but I'll show you real fast. This thing is a lifesaver. Voila. So, in here is a generator, uh, some shameless self-promotion, ambitionsnowskates.com. Uh, I'll put a link in the description if you guys are curious as to what this thing is. Um, it's kind of basically, uh, it's a skateboard for the snow. Pretty awesome. That's what I do in the winter. Uh, so in here I keep a tent and then cardboard for lighting fires, starting fires. This is a big light stand case. And then this bag down here is more light stands in it. But uh, yeah, I'll try not to make this video too long. Let's put this all back in here. It's crazy how this little 1000 watt generator fits in here, but really happy it does because I like having that with me so we can skate at night. Lock her up. Didn't work. Ta-da. Another perk to the uh, rack is that up here is actually enough room for me to sleep if I ever wanted to sleep under the stars or whatever. But um, so yeah, that's the the 2010 Ford Transit Connect uh, conversion. So yeah, hopefully uh, you know if you guys enjoyed this video, um, stay tuned. I'm gonna be trying to do as much of a detailed build as I can for you know going forward but um, yeah uh, hit the hit that like button subscribe if you are interested in seeing more uh, van build videos and tips and tricks and whatever I learned along the way but uh, yeah stay tuned for uh, some more adventures